still her beauty her beauty won her the prize for sure and to see her babes I don't think I know how many she has right now they are quite prolific and well even though the other girls had not just done as well they're still, they're good. They've done good. I do worry. I do, I do. Oh, to see them again. And the boys. These grandsons of ours. Especially Lizzie's. Oh, you will have introduced them to fine women around here. I know. It is my greatest dream now to have them married. As you know, we've been quite successful. Oh, I cannot wait till he comes to visit his grandma. be another ball maybe we can go to. <sighs> we'll work on getting us invited to a ball. Oh, summer. Oh. I cannot wait. Children in our house again. We have 
people to take care of the children, don't we? <laughs> oh, but I cannot wait. The house will be full of laughter again. Squabbling. Music. And... <gasps> it will do my heart good. Pains in my side and the beatings of my heart will calm down with the bitter patter of children. <laughs> oh, yes, tomorrow I shall write them. I shall tell them the importance of coming to see their mother before she dies. Not knowing how much time we have. your intelligent commentary without any encouragement. It's all up to me as usual. You just smile, calmly spout your wise words, and I must endure. smelling the salts. I fear I might faint right here on the bed. <sighs> I am now... I am feeling the fabric of our bed. The intrusiveness of my thoughts and my dreams. I cannot bear it any longer. Those girls must come home. We will see to it. Mm. And to have mm, the grandchildren and an heir to Pemberley in our family. Oh. There will be worry sometimes about Mary. They only have one child. I hope everything's well. I'm sure everything is fine. My girls. My girls. My girls. My girls and their family.
Good afternoon, Mr. Darcy. So, how was the lake today? Did you catch many fish? Hmm? Oh, I'm glad you enjoy your time. The weather seems amazing today. Maybe we should go for a walk a little bit later. Hmm? What do you think? Oh, but before I forget, I must inform you that we received a letter from Longbourn today. Yes. Oh, no, no. No bad news. Don't worry. Uh, it's from Mama and she is surprisingly inviting us in Longbourn this summer. Yes. <laughs> well, it's ironic, actually, <laughs> because I remember when we were living with them in Longbourn, she was spending most of her time trying to find husbands for all her daughters. <laughs> and now that we are all married, she wants us back. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't try to understand, you know. Some people are never satisfied <laughs> or happy. <laughs> and I guess Mama is one of those. But we must answer. So, what do you say? Should we accept or not? It's a tough decision because there are lots of pros and lots of cons. I would love to see Jane and Papa. I miss them so much. But I'm not sure I would be able to stay quiet around Mama and Lydia for several days, weeks. <laughs> And if Lydia is coming, it means also Mr. Wickham. Maybe I could take an arrangement with my sister Jane. Mm. If we could visit Bindley at Netherfield Park and stay with them there. Mm. It would be easier for everybody, I think. Yes. From there, we could visit Longbourn as often as we wish, but we will also have a retreat strategy in case things get, let's see, a little bit agitated in my family home. Mm -hmm. It would be also very convenient for you in case you have any meeting in London it would be really close from Hertfordshire and maybe I can sometime come with you to visit the gardeners <laughs> yeah oh it's been such a long time I miss my aunt and my uncle so much Oh, yes, I guess, yeah, I guess in the end, I really want to accept Mama's proposal. Mm -mm. But I don't know what to do about the children. Yes, she invited them all, all. she wants to see all her grandchildren. Mama, 
Emma. Well, I don't know what to think about that because hmm, I'm sure summer in Hertfordshire could do them a lot of good and also spend time with their cousins. It would be wonderful. But I'm mostly worried about our son, to be honest. Yes, he will soon turn 15. And you know what that means for Mama? He's the heir of Pemberley and of almost half of Derbyshire. I'm pretty sure that she has already a plan in mind for him and she will spend the entire time to introduce him to all the young unmarried ladies in Hertfordshire. Oh, of course she will. <laughs> Trust me, I know mama. He's too young for that. Oh, way too young. I need to spare him. Maybe we can go there only with the girls and we can ask your sister, Georgiana, if our son can spend the summer at her place. Yes, yes, it's an agreeable solution, actually, because he will be in such good company and he will practice the piano with her all the time. And most importantly, be safe from my mother. So, what do you think, Mr. Darcy? Hmm? <laughs> well, apparently it's happening. We shall return to Longmont very soon. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Hmm. It's still sunny outside. Hmm? Remember, you promised me a walk in the park. Hmm? So, shall we go? Hello, my dear. Our little Bennet is asleep under the tree over there. I believe he has climbed every tree in the park this morning. I didn't stop him, though he became quite filthy. I consider it prudent to let him expend as much energy out of doors to reduce breakage indoors. <laughs> my dear, you have dirt on your face. I suspect that you stopped to pull a few weeds as you walked back from
from Rosings Park. I thought as much. And how is Lady Catherine today, my dear? Ugh. One of her bad days? Well, at least in her increasingly demented state, she is easier to bear and to manage than the way Lizzie described her all those years ago. And now that Lady Catherine is confined to her bedchamber, she is the one who is in nobody's way in that part of the house. I am not subjected to the housekeeper's room. I play the pianoforte in the drawing room. I don't blame Anne for moving away as soon as she got married, though her husband's house is smaller. Her mother had such a hold on her, and she knows we are here to look after things, so she needn't worry about Rosings Park. Well, I have had a letter today, my dear. From Mama. It is long and rambling as usual, and full of talk about her nerves, but the long and short of it is, she is inviting us to a visit at Longbourn this summer. Well, I say visit, it's really more of a summons. Things certainly have changed. My family used to completely disregard me, and to be sure Lizzie still does, but ever since the birth of our little Bennett Collins, Mama has made a complete turnaround. No one ever thought that I would be the one to achieve keeping Longbourn in the family. Oh, of course you are family, my dear, but you know what I mean. After all the fuss, the Bennet is to inherit Longbourn. Even you yourself, my dear, quite overlooked me when you visited us all those years ago. If you had bothered to pay attention, you would have seen that while Lizzie was treating you with such disdain, I myself was observing you closely, and I liked what I saw, my dear. I do not understand why the others do not see what I see in you. But then I used to act so pretentious. I have been reading some of my old journal entries, my dear. Listen to this. Oh, ridiculous. Every impulse of feeling should be guided by reason, and in my opinion, exertion should always be in proportion to what is required. Ridiculous. What was I talking about? What idea had I of any impulse of feeling? Oh, here's another. We must stem the tide of malice and pour into the wounded bosoms of each other the balm of sisterly consolation. Sisterly distance has been the best thing for our family. There's another. Pride is a very common failing, I believe. By all that I have ever read, I am convinced that it is very common indeed, that human nature is particularly prone to it, and that there are very few of us who do not cherish a feeling of self-complacency on the score of some quality or other, real or imaginary. Vanity and pride are different things, though the words are often used synonymously. A person may be proud without being vain. Pride relates more to our opinion of ourselves. Vanity to what we would have others think of us. Well, that last one is still true. I'll tell you the truth, my dear. All of that, the writing of extracts, the quoting of great quotes... It was to set me apart from my sisters. Let us be honest. Every last one of them is more beautiful, more charming than I. I thought the only way to be significant was to seem more intelligent than the rest. I'm afraid I failed in that respect as well. I only became ridiculous. And then, as my sisters began to marry and leave home one by one, and I was the only one left, and the years stretched on one after the other, I began to lose hope of ever finding happiness. But then, when your poor dear Charlotte died of that fever, without ever having given you a single child, 
I saw my future open up ahead of me. I said to Mama, let us go and visit Mr. Collins. She said to me, Mary, why on earth would we go and visit that insufferable? Well, n never mind, my dear. Anyway, then she looked at me and she saw the light in my eyes. Then I saw that light reflected back at me. And for the first time in my life, Mama and I understood one another. So we came to visit you, my dear. You were so lonely and lost. You just needed someone to care for you and understand you. And now here we are. Our first child is strong and healthy. And, God willing, our second child as well. Yes, my dear, our second child. Oh, do not fuss, my dear. I feel perfectly well. Yes, I am pleased too. Well, what do you say, my dear? Shall we go and visit my family this summer? Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, mail for me. Thank you, dearest. Delightful. It's a letter from Mother. Yes, well. Oh, how perfectly lovely. Mother, in all of her verbose glory. <laughs> has invited us and the children to Longbourn for the summer. Oh, do say that we can go. You know, the children have just been dying to see their cousins. And it has been an age since I've seen my sisters all together in one house. Yes, yes, I know. Mother can be a bit much, especially when we're all together, but if it all gets too much for you, I'm sure that you and Father can sneak away. Or, if you can keep him awake long enough, perhaps a ride to Pemberley. Gentlemen will have no end of manly distractions there, 
I'm quite sure. Oh, excellent. Thank you, dearest. Oh, I shall write to mother right away. And then, oh my goodness. We have so many preparations to make before we undertake this journey. Luckily, my new hat was just delivered today. What good fortunate timing. If I decorate it with some flowers from the garden, it will be beautiful. And the best part is, it will make Lydia green with envy. <laughs> yes, well. You know that everyone wants to know the secrets of my flowers and my gardening, but my secrets are here, locked away, and there they shall remain. Not even for you, dearest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like a cup of tea before you go? I know you have lots of things to do this afternoon yourself. Of course. Not just for you. Will you sit and join me? No, that's all right. I have mother's letter to attend to and a whole list of things to make and pack and oh my goodness. It's probably going to take the rest of the afternoon. I plan to sit and drink my tea. <sighs> Write my reply. And I'll see you at dinner. Father never changes. Hmm. Oh, she's had word from Mary. How lovely. by her handwriting that her nerves were just shot at the thought of all of us together again. If she receives a reply from everyone, I assume she'll take to her bed for a few days. I'd better take that into consideration when we time our trip. Now, where is my 
There we are. Dearest mother and father. from mommy? Oh. We are due a trip. And this means we get to explore a little bit. I'm not bored. It's great here, lots of sceneries, but don't you just miss travelling around and meeting new people? The parties, the dancing, I can't be the only one, George. We love our fine wines and fancy dinners. And I don't think we do it enough. Anyway, where's this letter? Then, don't keep a girl waiting. You know I'm impatient, George. <gasps> Let's have a look. Oh, it's definitely mommy. I wonder what this is. Probably she's whining about something daddy did, or maybe she misses us. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, George, it's an invite, and I think it's come at just the right time. Invited us to hers for a party. Oh, oh you know what mommy's like. Uh, there's a few lines about the party, and the rest is just a load of rumblings about how much she misses us. Oh, and her nerves, her poor nerves. <laughs> her poor nerves. It's all she ever goes on about. Oh, well, this is a great opportunity for us to travel now. On the way there, 
we can visit lots of new places and of course buy a new gown and what shall you wear George? well you look good in anything and so do I but I still need something new my sisters will be there and they'll be in rich fancy clothing so um, I must look too. <laughs> They're always throwing their fancy parties <laughs> in the most expensive places, inviting all the well to do people. And this time we're invited. And we're going to show them, George. We're going to be high class. And yeah, the rest of the letter. It's all really just about her. places and it's quite a distance from here much, George. It's good wine. I know it's all the excitement getting to you, isn't it? <laughs> right, let me go and refill, and we can talk some more about our adventures.
servant must have left this letter on my dressing table. I'm almost ready for bed, Charles. This evening was lovely. Everybody was charming and behaved admirably. I'm delighted. Mm, the London Society is so entertaining and provides such good examples for our children. Oh, Charles, I must inform you that um, this letter arrived from Longbourn today while we were at the ball. And it's from my mother. We were invited to visit this summer. My dear Jane, let me begin this letter by informing you that your father's health is in excellent condition for his old age. However, your poor mother has longed for her loveliness since the departure of her beloved daughters, who are fortunately all married. <clears throat> poor mama. I can imagine that living in an empty house isn't good for her nerves. <laughs> as she would say herself. But I believe her mind must still be in good shape because she never forgets to mention <laughs> that her five daughters are married. <laughs> For this reason, I would like to invite all of you and your families to come and join us in Hertfordshire this summer. I want to see all my daughters and my grandchildren. Oh. I'm not reading you the rest of the letter. It only contains unrelated news about some friends and relatives in Milton. What do you think, Charles? Should we accept? It would be lovely to see Mama, Papa, and my sisters again. I haven't seen them in years, apart from Lizzie, who we had the pleasure to meet again. Oh, um, I had the pleasure to meet again last time we were invited by our friend Darcy to visit Pamberley. Mm. But I miss my parents. Yeah. And Mary, Kitty and Lydia. This will also be a great opportunity to take the children away from the city, enjoy the summer. You know, life in the countryside. Yeah. Shine's game. Oh, I think my grandfather's doing well there. Definitely. Oh, we could spend the summer at Netherfield Park. And invite the Darcy family to join us. From there, it'll be easy to visit Longbourn almost every day. Charles, please say yes. Mm. I'm so happy and grateful, my dear, but I'm not sure your sister Caroline will want to join us. No. She seems to prefer the company of Upper London Society. Anyway, I'll write our answer in the morning, tomorrow, and uh, let them know that we accept. Yeah? 
Yeah, the invitation. Can you arrange all the details for our arrival at Mother Phil Park? We can discuss this further more tomorrow. It's already very late. I want to finish reading this letter. Give me a few minutes. I'll finish preparing my hair and I'll join you in our chamber.